How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Mother's Day Sunday. Shout out to all the mommies in the group that are hanging out and watching. We had a nice one today. I made lunch. I made lunch with the kids. We had a couple of drinks at lunch. It was wonderful. We had a great Mother's Day today. But a lot of wrestling to talk about. SmackDown. Build into a title for title match. I saw a lot of people were interested in it. They, they don't want that to be a title for title. We'll break that down. AEW Collision. Building its way to double or nothing. That's two weeks away. Also, New Japan Resurgence. This was a... Really good show, but man, it was long. This was over five hours. I had to go, come in and out. I got some bits and pieces of the show. I couldn't, I couldn't commit the five hours last night. It's my birthday weekend also. I've been a bad boy all weekend. It's okay. It's fine. I'm allowed to. I'm turning 40 on Monday. This is the deal now. One year closer to death. That's how I see this. But a lot of this and a lot more to talk about. I also want to talk about, um, you know, like this this topic over journalism and asking the right questions and how to ask and who to ask. And I know it's been a big topic over the question that was presented to Triple H at Backlash. And I wanted to weigh in on this. As someone that is not a journalist, but I'm pretty close to being one, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it. I uh, We'll talk about this and a couple other things. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Hey, guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter or X. Follow me on X. I still can't get myself to call it Twitter. At Andrew Zarian on X. You can find everything I'm doing over there. I do four different pro wrestling shows a week. It's a lot of pro wrestling to talk about. Let's talk about SmackDown. Because this, this was a build to their show in Saudi Arabia. The Queen and King, King and Queen of the Ring. Nick Aldis brings out Cody to announce a new challenger for his title. And it's Logan Paul. This is interesting. MG, did you see the discourse around this on Friday? It seemed like people didn't want this to be the match. Well, I also think people are confused. Is this title for title? They kind of left it open air. I know Cody I think it said is. it Cody, was. Yeah, Cody said it was. But, yeah, but they didn't really say much. I think that was a little confusing. So people were a little... And, and also, you know, it's Logan Paul, and he's a heat magnet. And that's what you want, right? Um, this is Cody... Or this will be Logan Paul's second chance at a title shot. Or at, at the that title, Logan you know, since he's been around, yeah. And the yeah. other one was in Saudi Arabia as well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So apparently they like him over there. Maybe that's part of it. <laughs> and he can take a loss, and he's not going to lose anything from it. Well, I, they could know, put on a really good match, right? They could put absolutely. on a really good match, yep. and mm -hmm. they will have that crowd, you know, excited and doing well. Yeah. I I don't know. And, you know, I, will they have a great match? Yes. Will people be into it? Yes. Will it lead to anything? I don't know. That's I mean, could there be a DQ? Yeah. Could AJ Styles come out and spoil it? Could uh, whoever the contender is for the U.S. title come in? I don't know. I, I hope they do something pretty cool. I wouldn't mind seeing Cody with two titles. I wouldn't mind seeing them do something interesting like that. Well, I think it's leading to a big match with Solo Sokoa, right? Isn't that where we're going? Yeah, I guess so, right? That's the I match. Mean, I, uh, yeah, that's the match, like, in the summer. I mean, you know, obviously Roman's back going to fall back in line at some point, and we don't know where he's going to be. Well, I'm sure we'll, well, there, minute, there's but... a no, well, there's a number of these, right? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. what do you do with Dwayne, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do with The Rock? Uh, what um, The Rock is Dwayne. <laughs> as I, as, what, do you do, what do you do with Roman? Because I just read The Rock. So I have a little Bloodlines uh, uh, cheat sheet that I have here where I doodle throughout the show. Just, just to think about this, right? And we'll talk about the Bloodline. Think about the members and potential members, right? You got Jacob Fatu, 
coming in. You got Tamatanga, Tangaloa already there. You got Hikaleo that is eventually destined for this company. If you saw him last night for that New Japan show, mm. I mean, he's destined to be in the bloodline. Then you got The Rock. Then you got Roman. Then you got Jimmy and Jay. And, of course, Sammy because he's a bloodline member. He counts. <laughs> I mean, they got... They got have, uh... I mean, this is NWO-level stuff. Who else can they add? There's well, another. There's Zillow, an, there's right? Zill, yeah, Zill he's younger. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got him too. I mean, listen, I'm into this. I think this is tremendous. They've been they've been able to incorporate legitimate family in a family angle. Uh, the la I mean, we've seen this happen in the past. So is <laughs> you know what I just thought of is oh, Sammy <laughs> Zayn the Brian Pillman of the Heart Foundation? Yes, yes. <laughs> Wow. Sami Zayn would have to be. He would be the only one that was not related in any possible way. Except for the fact that he did train with the hearts. So, I mean, it, it's fascinating stuff. I love all this stuff. This is this is all oh, great stuff. Yeah, but we can just say that Sammy went to the the Island of Revel Relevancy with Yeah, Roman he went to the Island of Rev weekend. Relevancy. Yeah. One and weekend he, and had a had a had a small mini camp there. <laughs> Listen, I know a lot of very wealthy men that pay to go to these retreats, you know, and they come back with their certificate of authenticity that they were at this at this retreat. So maybe Sammy got one there of those and they paid like fifty thousand dollars to join there for self healing. You know, did I ever tell you I almost got scammed into one? One of my buddies. Oh dear. Yeah, I, I'll tell that story on Matt Men. That's a good Matt Men story about how this person was like, You should come to this meeting. It's really it's very high profile people. Very good for networking. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I think that's great. I think that's great. I think it's great for work. And then it's like, hey, here, it's like $30,000 to attend. <laughs> like, like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I don't need to meet anybody at that price. <laughs> Nick Aldis uh, brought out Cody, like we said. Next challenger is Logan Paul. Nia Jax defeated Naomi to, to advance in the Queen of the Ring tournament. This went about 10 minutes. Standard TV match. Carmelo Hayes defeated Baron Corbin to advance as well. This went about six minutes, six and a half minutes. Jay defeated Piper Niven to advance. This was a good match. This was a good five minute match where Great. Jade looked. The, the fact that she was able to get Piper up for the jaded, uh, yeah, she just it looked, looked great. Impressive every yeah, time. It, it's yep. they they have to be careful, right? Oh, yeah. it's the oh, same yeah. approach do, as what AEW did. Have her out there. Have her look great. Protect anything that you need to protect. Because she is a star. You look at her and... I mean, we said it from day one, right? Look at her. She came out. The first time she came out, I went, uh-oh. I got a phone call. I'm not... I, I'm not... I wish I was exaggerating this number. Probably like two weeks after her debut. I got a phone mm -hmm. call from somebody over there asking me, you know, what's, what her deal is. In general, not like when does her contract expire? I'm sure they wanted that too because I didn't have an answer to that. But she's so impressive. Bianca Belair defeated Candice LeRae to advance as well. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, they're well, they're they're setting up the tag team partners to meet in the semifinals on the on the SmackDown side. It mm -hmm. looks like. Yeah. But I'm sure something's gonna happen. I where. I don't know. We I got the results farther down the notes when we get to it. Okay. Uh, we can go through the uh, the matchups for next week or yeah. this coming week. But, yeah. Paul Heyman was shown talking to Solo backstage. Solo's still very angry about how the bloodline was drafted in the third round. He blamed Heyman for this. He blamed Heyman for taking money out of Solo's pocket and putting Roman uh, by pulling Roman from the draft. Interesting, huh? Yeah. So, so the... The premise is that with Roman out, we're we're not as strong as group, so we need his name power to get not number one draft pick. Yeah. Which he, I also found said, he also said he also said that uh, he had spoken to Roman, and Roman said that Solo yes. was in charge now. But was he lying? I think he was. Yeah. So it's very very sneaky. This is this is definitely bubbling, and and they're they're doing a good job of keeping it kind of like kind of like together so well this just, is the limbo period give, before give after, a more, yeah. after mania and before SummerSlam. Yeah. so they're trying to they got to piece a lot of these things together now 
Uh, Tama yeah, Tonga defeated like Angelo out. Dawkins, by the way. That went two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this was supposed to be Bobby Lashley's spot. And AJ Styles, uh, Randy Orton defeated AJ to advance in the men's. Uh, this one, 17 minutes. This so was all was, tournament yeah, matches. So was, yes, yes. And I loved them. I thought this made this whole show look really good. So, question. Was Tama Tonga going to beat Lashley then? Mm. I don't know. That's interesting. Because that's Dawkins interesting. was the replacement. Yeah. And uh Dawkins just got just completely ran over. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I mean, listen, you want it you want to make Tama look good. You want to you you want uh Tungaloa to look good. Uh I think Tama Tama's better, I would say than Tungaloa. Uh but yeah, but you gotta I, I you gotta display these that. guys as very very dominant, uh, top tier. Uh, I'm just curious when Jacob Fatu comes in, what they do and how they do this. I think he's going to be on the other side. I think he's going to come on on Roman side, and that's where we're going to go. We'll see. That's my. And where does the Rock go? Maybe the Rock takes all the no. young guys, you know, and that's been his whole thing. You know, he he's rebuilding it. They failed him. He is the final boss, and they failed the final boss. Roman didn't get, he, Rock didn't get pinned. Roman did. He lost, not Dwayne. Dwayne did well. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more when we come back from break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wanted to bring up the advances so far in this King and Queen of the Ring tournament. My notes are flying all over the place. Look at these. Look at this insanity I got on here. Just scribble, scrabble. Nothing else. A flow chart. It's you're a flow not, chart of my very, thoughts. You're making a flow chart. <laughs> yeah. It's my deranged <laughs> thoughts while I do wrestling radio. Uh, <clears throat> quarterfinal matches for Raw set up. Dragunov versus Jey Uso. You have Gunther, and it's either Rey Mysterio or, uh, or Kofi Kingston. Women's match, you got Lyra Valkyrie and Zoe Stark. Io Sky against either Shayna Baszler or Zelina Vega. Quarterfinal matches it's, for uh, Smith. Yeah, that's going to be I think you're doing this. those today. Today. Yeah, I think you're doing those tomorrow. Today, or they're like right now, like in the next hour or so. <laughs> what do you, yes, in <laughs> the next the hour shows. or so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I forgot there's a house show. Uh, Quarterfinal matches for SmackDown. Carmelo Hayes, Randy Orton, which that. I am interested in that match. Carmelo and Randy? That's Tomatonga, LA Knight. You know what? This is this could be another good match. Jade and Nia. Bianca and Tiffany Stratton. You know what? This is building up to be some pretty good matches. Can I go back for one thing for yeah. you and ask you a question? So what do you think of Il Ilya Dragunov so far? Because he got over. To me, he got over in one night on Raw. And that Jey Uso match is going to be quite he's, interesting you know he's very good um he reminds me of somebody and i can't put my finger on it his style <laughs> i can't you know, put my I, I i can tell you tell mm, me but can we say his name on air are we not allowed uh chris benoit you you <laughs> get a little benoit vibe from him I do. I just get the intensity of him. Dude, talk about the Benoit. Tommy Billington last night. Like we'll, we'll talk about this, too. He was yes. more Benoit than Benoit was. I mean, Benoit idolized <laughs> uh, the, the, the Dynamite Kid. The Dynamite Kid, a and, yeah. and Tommy was, I mean, every step of the way mimicking, I mean, just his body and mannerisms last night. I, it was actually crazy to see. Uh, yeah, I guess he does have intensity like, like Benoit. I, I, I don't know. I mean... Even more like a Danielson style. -wise, style. Even like a Danielson yeah. style, I could see. I think he's incredible. And they have a wrestler's wrestler. And, yes, you know, he's done incredible stuff in NXT. Wide, right? I think the unfortunate yep. thing for him was in NXT was when, you know, I know NXT got 650,000 people that watch. I know they do well some nights. But, listen, I you got to be realistic. It's not, if this guy is 30 now showed up in the peak of NXT, which he kind of did right before, you know, the, the world stopped, right? That's when he, that's when he showed yeah. up there. Well, 20, he came in. 19? Yeah, 2019 he showed up. From, yeah, they brought him in um, from NXT UK. And he was doing unbelievable right. in NXT UK. Yeah, when when they did the 
tie dye version of NXT East Two. Yeah, but he kind of he kind of got pushed down and then he came up and then it was like, wow, this dude is awesome. Well, they've they've re so. they've reshaped NXT back to you know what it should be. Yes, something but, good. You know, this is a guy that wrestled in Germany uh, for a while. He was NXT in the NXT UK. He was in progress. I mean, a tremendous, tremendous wrestler from the mid 2010s. Yep. Right. That that and and those mid 2010s generate. I mean, so many guys came out of there. So many guys. So, I mean, he's one of those. I think he'll do great on this main roster if they present them properly. I, I don't know. It's too early to tell. But they do have some. They have him and Gunther. Look at this. I mean, look at what they have in that company. Actually, if you really think about it, WWE, you know, we talk about how they raided Ring of Honor for that NXT. They raided mm -hmm. Europe more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. They took all Even, their top talent. I mean, Gunt, uh, Walter, uh, uh, Dragonall. I mean, uh, New Catch Republic. Mm -hmm. Rhea Ripley? I Rhea. Mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot of the... Um, uh, who's the other one I'm thinking of? Laia Valkyria? Uh, there's a lot there. Yeah, I mean, they've done they've done great job at building this again. I, I'm curious to see how this goes. Um, very, very curious. Especially we got a, you know, we got a pay-per-view coming up. Have they announced any other matches for that King and Queen of the Ring show? Um, yes. Obviously the finals, right? We got the, we got the, the men's and women's finals. That's two matches right there. We have the world title and U.S. title, I guess, title for title match. Um, here, I can get you the whole thing real quick. I'm doing this live. <laughs> All right, did you find it? Let's see. No, you did not find it. I'll move on to something yes, else. Yes, you have, you have uh, the women's title, Becky Lynch against Liv Morgan. Oh, there you go. Got it. Okay, so mm. Liv should win that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Becky, Becky def defends against Liv. You have a triple threat for the IC title. Sami Zayn is defending against uh, Bronson Reed and Chad Gable. You have the men men's finals. You have the women's finals. In the world title match. All right, great, easy. Mm -hmm. Yep, I am. Very I easy. am very intrigued by that Becky Lynch Live match because they're doing some interesting little subtle stuff with Live and the whole um, Judgment Day stuff. Oh, dude, with the with the purple bandana in her pocket. Yeah, which I didn't realize. I went back and someone had pointed it out that Dom was wearing that bandana earlier in the show. Oh, interesting. and now it's in Liv's pocket. So. There's there's a, there's some stuff going on there that's that's interesting. It's leading to something fun. I don't know what yeah. it is, but yeah. it looks like that's. It, I'm I'm guessing we're late, we're we're trying to build to a really hot live versus Rhea feud when she comes back. Yeah, so I, I dude, and you know what? And live is great. Live is great. I don't so care. Listen, if you if you if you know how much effort and work she puts in. There's no criticism you could give her. She's incredible. She really is. Mm -hmm. I have a soft spot for her. Tremendous soft spot. The pizza thing, right? The pizza <laughs> thing. That was it. That was the moment she was sold. We went to NXT. They were at the theater at the garden. Not the garden, but the theater at the garden. And she came out. This is what? Actually, what? This is 2016. It? This is it. Yeah, I got it right behind me. You want right? to see it? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This is terrible for radio. I apologize, but YouTube. I was at this show. <laughs> this is great for the people watching. November 16, 2016. This was the show we were at. It was uh, the Big Apple Breakdown. It was a live NXT event. Look at the, I mean, just the main event. Look at the six-man tag match. You had Nakamura and DIY versus, uh, this is actually hysterical, The Revival and Samoa Joe, okay? <laughs> Which is great. There's you had Asuka, match. <laughs> Asuka versus Ember Moon versus Nikki Cross. For the women's title. You had Cedric Alexander versus Bobby Roode. The Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young. TM61 versus Sanity. You also on the show, NXT Showcase match. Oh my God. Oni Lorkin against the Drifter Eli Elias Sampson. You had Daria 
Oh my God, Daria. She's still going by Daria here. And Liv Morgan against Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. No way, Jose versus Roderick Strong. That was the show. Wow, that's such a flashback. And what? And that's eight years ago, right? She yeah. came out, and her thing was she. I mean, she was just newly established. It. She would come out with a pie. And she would eat it while she's walking to the ring. She dropped it, picked it up, and ate it again. I'm like, that's my type of girl. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold on her. I wanted to touch on this before uh, we went on to Collision, of course, uh, New Japan Resurgence. I got a ton of messages over quite just asking me questions about sc the scrums and asking questions at WWE events. And if uh, PR messages us and tells us what to ask and what not to ask. And this is all, I guess this is all because of the backlash press conference. That there was a question that was asked by a journalist in France to Triple H regarding, I believe, the release, right? Drew Gulak. Of yes. Drew Gulak. And Hunter gave a very off-the-cuff, semi-insulting response. And uh, it caused a stir, right? And people have been asking me what I think about this and the type of questions that are asked in these scrums. Because I know Dave went on a uh, on you know a rant on the subject, uh, pretty much saying, "Listen, uh, these people are not supposed to be your friends. You're supposed to piss them off because you're asking the questions that they don't want to answer, and that's journalism. You have to dig." See, I'm not a journalist. I've been in these scrums. I've been in these press conferences. And the last time I was there, I got a bunch of criticism as to why I didn't ask a question. Listen, I don't make money by being a journalist. That's not what I do. I have tremendous respect to these guys. It's not an easy job. You got to constantly work hard. You got to constantly do, do things a certain way. However, I will tell you, at that AEW scrum, and I got a minute here, I didn't feel comfortable to ask a question because it's half real and half in, in wrestling. And it's just a very bizarre place to be. And a lot of people say, how come the journalists aren't asking the hard-hitting questions in these environments? I can tell you from my, ex from my experience, I don't, I don't feel comfortable asking a really serious question when it's half in character, all of the stuff. I think it's silly. I just didn't feel comfortable doing it, but I think it's I, I think it's it's difficult to criticize these guys when you're in that room and you're supposed to ask a question. A thousand things are going through your head. Uh, I think it was great that Luke asked that question, and I think we need more questions asked. And I hope that these press conferences are are more real than storyline driven. I want to add that Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, during the break, I got a message from somebody and they said, hey, what is it like in those scrums? And my answer is, it's insane. And, and, and uh, I wrote insane. And he said, explain. I go, listen, you know, I, I had a question for Tony and I knew the answer already to that question. I didn't think he would ask it to me. I, he would answer it when I was in, I was in the last scrum. At, what was it? World's End. I had a question. I knew I wouldn't get an answer. I was still going to ask it. And then I saw that the whole thing was half, you know, kayfabe and real. And it gets really weird. Uh, well, people Tony were asking, Storm is. Well, you Tony know what? Storm, Tony Tony yeah. was there. But you know what? Tony was in character. And, right. you know, uh, Tony Khan is semi playing along with it. And then you had people come in for interviews. And they're all, they're in character when they're doing those interviews. Mm-hmm. It's half in, half out. I, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird example of how to, how to do journalism. I, I don't think that it, it really, those press conferences are the appropriate setting to get any relevant answer. Uh, the guys that ask, like John Alba, you know, he'll, he doesn't give a crap. He'll ask. Um, I mean, I'm definitely, at the next show that I'm at, I have a bunch of stuff I'm going to ask this time because that was the first time I was at an AEW one. It was so weird to me. You know, like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning also. That's the other wacky part of this. It's two in, 2 in the morning. Everybody wants to go home. Everybody wants to get out of there. It's half in, half out. Wacky stuff. Weird.
I mean, I love being there. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to ask a question this time. It's going to be a terrible question, too, just to upset everybody. Let's talk about AEW collision here. This was a good collision. Yes. I like this a lot. A lot of good wrestling last night. Oh, man, a ton of great wrestling last night. Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli defeated top flight, Dante Morton and Darius Morton. Claudio kind of left Danielson in the ring here. And Did you hear his reasoning later in the show? I'm sorry? As to why? Did you Say hear that. his reasoning later in the show? What was it? Why? Remind me. It was basically he he said, I, he goes, my, my friend Dan, Brian, or Danielson got hurt because of uh, um, Eddie Kingston. And why is he time. picking him? And yeah, why did he pick him? Yeah, why is he picking him? Because now he, I don't want to see this happen to my friend again, so I'm done with it. And he goes, that's why I walked away. He goes, I want nothing to do with it. It's an interesting angle, but I like it. Yeah. And I'm wondering if what happened last night at New Japan will... Well, uh, I mean, the bigger the bigger part of this, this, the bigger part of Danielson coming out here last night, he's building that match with Nigel, huh? Yeah, and they and, were uh, hyper aggressive on commentary to kind of tell you that this is the match. I I feel like you're right. I feel like they're getting there, but I'm wondering. I'm guessing after Forbidden Door, we'll we'll get the build, the full build to it, and we'll know that uh, Nigel's actually going to wrestle. I mean, we have till the end of August, and I, I I'm pretty certain that that they are work. I mean, how could they not? It just feels like that's where they're going. I mean, he's so yeah, over but not the top yeah. I mean, commentary. if I'm gonna go based on vibes, mm -hmm. I would say the vibe is uh, that that's the match, you know, and that's been the match yep. since Collision started. Since Nigel went on commentary, he's been pounding Danielson. So eventually, he's gonna respond and do something. But when is the when was Nigel's last match? 2011, 2012. Oh. Yeah. Pull that uh, up. I'm curious about that because yeah, he... Go ahead and keep talking and I'll, I don't, uh, and I'll find I mean, it's been you. over 10 years. I could be wrong. My encyclopedia could be breaking in my head. <laughs> Turning 40 tomorrow. Do you know all these false memories are now happening? Matches that I don't Happy remember. Happy birthday, by the Thank way. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, you know, I'm in my vortex right now about this birthday. Not enjoying it. <laughs> I just feel it, dude. My my ACL is terrible in my left knee. My hamstring on my right leg, my my right leg is terrible. I have uh, a, a ruptured. Di I have two ruptured discs in my back. I have sciatica. And now, do you know? Do you know what the kiss of death is? Do you know what the insult to injury oh, is? No. Gout. Jesus. I have gout. My toes, one whiskey, one, one, one whiskey drink. Doesn't matter what it is. Will drive me into madness for two days. And not because like it's, 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 it's creating psychosis. It's because I can't move. Do you know that beer and whiskey, dude? I cannot do it anymore. This gout yeah. has taken a hold of me. I just eat, I eat leaves all day long. That's it. Maybe, maybe I'm allowed to have a little bit of meat. It's the worst thing. Really, I, I'm not, I'm joking, but it's so painful. It's insane. Uh, Danielson, Claudia, did you find this about Nigel? Yes, I did. Okay, yes, what's I the did. date? When's the uh, last date? Was I close? December, December 17th, 2011. Man, and I was James right. Phillips. I said 2011. Yep. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Who did he wrestle last? Event. APWA, uh, TJ Phillips. Who what I a way to end his career. I don't know if I remember that. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think a Danielson in a stadium is a much better last match to have. And it's well-deserved. Yeah, he was, was going to have a one-off. That would be The great. early 2000s, he was the man. Will Ospreay defeated Lee Moriarty with Shane Taylor. Another display for Ospreay. Tony Schiavone announced that Willow would be defending the TBS title against Stardom, Stardom's Tom, Tom Nakano. Tam Nakano. Yes, it's Tam. I say it in the most American of ways. <laughs> At Stardom <laughs> Flashing Champions next Saturday ahead of Double or Nothing. Ahead of the Double or Nothing match with Mercedes. Um, so Mercedes should get this title back, right? Uh, or should get the title. Should get her win back from Willow. I feel that way, but I'm also wondering if they're going to 
let drag this out and kind of build the story a little more because I feel like I could see where maybe Stokely switches sides and goes with Mercedes. I think you know she what needs, she needs a mouthpiece. I'm sorry, I, but she's she's a terrible baby face promo. She's I, I, better. Heel. Okay, I'm gonna say this. Mm. I I think she's a great heel promo. I think she's an mm -hmm. incredible heel. She doesn't come off as a genuine baby face. And it has nothing right. to do with her being a good person or bad person or anything uh, of, of who she is as a real person. I think it's, it's because she's flashy. She's really it's flashy. WWE cadence that she's learned over the years. I and think, also it's the WWE promise. cadence. Uh, yes. Listen, uh, you know, she was an independent wrestler. Uh, she was not an established star prior to WWE. She became a huge name because of her abilities. She has been taught one gear to be in for promos. Not a bad thing, especially for WWE, if that's what you're doing. But she's in a whole different environment now. It's going to change. I think once she turns and becomes a heel, she'll be more comfortable in her, in her place. Even in WWE, though, we would have the same criticism. Mercedes is a yep. great heel. And her promos would change, especially when she was a heel versus a face, because she's a pandering baby face always. Because she comes off such a better heel. She has to pander. I, I'm looking forward to this. I want to see what they do with Mercedes more. Now, I, I mean, people are like, well, where are the ratings? I said Mercedes was not brought in for that. She was not brought no. in. I mean, obviously, you want the ratings to increase. But she's nobody she at AEW to told me. Yeah, she was to add a demographic to the, to the already. No, what they I, have. I think she was an established really good established women's star that's still in her prime. Yep. She's still young. She's still in her prime. She's not uh, an act from days past. She's not a new up and coming act that they got to convince you. Like, you know, Sky Blue is tremendous. Sky Blue is a new act. She's going to she's going to have a great future. Uh Mariah May, another tremendous new act. Non-established on North American television act. Mariah May, Camille, uh, you know, there's so many of them up and coming. But Mercedes is in I'll her give prime. You, I got an example for you. Serena Deep, who's going for the title, is, to me, she's very good, but is she top level? Um, Serena? I, I, yeah. I, I have to tell you, it, Serena, to me, is the saddest case story because... She's so good, like incredibly good. Her promo ability is is great. She never got a chance to display this yeah. for numerous and reasons. You know, she had. I know she flat. had personal issues. She had injuries. She after leaving WWE, that was. I mean, do people not realize that she was in WWE? She was a trainer for like that whole that whole run we just talked about in the last segment, the NXT. Uh, the 2016, she was the trainer for all the women. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to believe, but yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, she is incredible. She's very good. Was she the trainer? Yeah, she was. Yeah, in yeah, the performance. Was, yeah, yeah. She became yep, a coach mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was a coach. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, we talked about Liv Morgan last segment, and she was a big part of development of her in that yeah. whole generation. Yeah, she, she semi-retired in 2015 and then came back. I mean, great stuff. I mean, she's incredible. Let's go through this card really quickly before we run out of time here. We always tend to do that. Uh, Brian Cage and Gates of Agony defeated Evan Rivers and the Voros Twins. Great, terrible name. And I want to talk about this. Tommy Billington great. and Dax Harwood. This was a very old school style match. Tommy looks just like the Dynamite Kid. Uh, like Dynamite Kid pre, pre steroids, right? Yeah, in his very early years when in his they early just years. started the British Bulldogs tag team. Okay, he so this is not the Dynamite Kid's son. This is the nephew. Correct. Okay, I gotta tell you, man. I I, I was super impressed. Why not bring in Davey back? Why not bring him and have him team they up might. and you now have the new Bulldogs? They might, but I don't know. Hey. 
I don't know what I feel about that, but yeah, I, I do <laughs> you don't like, like it. I you don't like, like it. it. Well, I don't like it because I don't want to rip off a band. I, there's just so many bad things that were associated with that as well. So I don't want it. To I don't be... think anybody remembers. I don't think anybody will okay, remember fair. that. Fair. Okay. You know, he he they put on a great match. Now I don't know when's the last next time we're gonna see him. I have no idea. I mean, he he wrestles, I think, with his brother, right? With Mark Billington, they they actually they do do the Billington Bulldogs, right? They they're they're wrestling. I think um, they wrestled in Rev Pro last year. Is okay. that cool? I'm into it, dude. Like what I I'm a I'm a sucker for a nostalgia act. Okay, I'm a sucker for that, especially if it's like the kid. And he's really good too, or she's really good too. I get I get sucked into that. I love familiarity. I like to know who these people are. I like the connection that I've built with it, and it works. I thought they did a great job. I think Dax did a tremendous job at showing that this kid is good. I hope they do something with him. See, that was everything I love about pro wrestling. That match. It was fantastic. Also, we're getting, I believe we're getting AW champion uh, Swerve Strickland and and Brian Cage on Dynamite in a Eliminator match. Yes. So, Mogul Embassy is no more. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. We ran out of time, but I wanted to touch on this. Moxley... Uh, last night at Resurgence, IWGP Championship, Moxie defeated Shota Umino. In a, I, this was really good, this match. I really enjoyed it. After the match, Evil and Ren Narita came out for House of Torture and attacked Moxley and Umino. Evil then challenged Moxley for the title. Evil then changed his mind, calling himself the real champion. And Moxley would need to challenge him. And then he spray-painted the IWGP title black and he stood over Moxley. I hope the story here i don't even care about the match you know what i care about i want that dumb title gone i want the old one brought back i knew that's where you were gonna go with this thank god <laughs> get rid of that that the divas title with the wings it looks terrible bring back that big giant metal thing <laughs> with all the sharp edges that was really, I liked it. That was really good. I, 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 I'm excited for that. You also had the Bucks uh, show up at the end of the no rope match between Gabe Kidd and Eddie Kingston where they murdered each other. Eddie got banged up here. I don't know if he's legitimately hurt or what, but he was on the outside and they delayed Jack Perry coming out. But they attacked Kingston when he was already dead. Uh, the Young Bucks would cut a promo before dropping Eddie with the EVP. Uh, so this is leading into that match. Zack Sabre Jr. and Tanahashi had another classic match. What, great for Tanahashi at this stage in his uh, career to be wrestling like that. Uh, and I was right. Yoda Suji is the real deal, dude. He's the best. He's great. I hope they do something more with him. Guys, we're out of time here. We'll be back next week with another episode of Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time. Take care.